Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, we made it. We finally fucking made it to the end of season seven. And you know what? For those who do enjoy this season, I apologize, but I haven't disliked Supernatural this much since the Dab era. I think the only reason why I kept watching this show at this point was because of the commitment I had with my dad. It was just a routine. We would watch Supernatural every Thursday. Well, then it would move to Wednesday and Friday. Even after I moved out, I was still going over and watching episodes like these ones with my dad. We did that all the way up until season 11, which is when uh, I then moved up to 100 Mile and that's when the the full thing kind of broke. But holy shit, guys, this season sucks. Say that it's an entire piece of garbage is a bit harsh, I will admit, so it's not that bad, but it's not good either. It's unfortunate too, because it starts off really well. The opening episode of the season is actually probably one of the best episodes because it sets up things. It sets up Castiel is a villain, but there's obviously something behind it all. A bit of like conflict between the boys and Castiel. It shows that Sam's brain is complete goo goo gaga. And then it just craps all over itself. After Castiel explodes, we are introduced to the Leviathans, sort of. And they are just people who want to eat people. Just to say that you want to eat the entire human race or put them on a conveyor belt, that should sound terrifying. But I guess after getting the you know, the apocalypse, and then having all of the monsters in the world rally together to then take over the world. Just having one set of monsters wanting to eat people is just such a fucking dumb down in terms of everything that the show had done. And then it just fell off. It constantly did this dipping into monster of the week and even then they would try and do story episodes related to the conflict between the brothers being that of jewel state sam's old monster friend that dean murders cold-blooded and then proceeds to make sam feel bad about it and in the end he never gets any kind of fucking justification for what he did he just justifies himself he never goes through any kind of character trait or character development to acknowledge that hey maybe he was a fucking asshole now obviously there are some decent episodes in this season meet the new boss being the opener slash fiction where evil leviathan sam and dean were going around killing people that was actually pretty good death store where bobby is fighting to try and not die but he is going to die that's a pretty good episode too girl with a dungeon and dragon tattoo well the introduction of felicia day's character charlie she was really fun and that kind of correlates into the end of the season with party on garth of grave importance reading is fundamental like they start to set up stuff but it's like where the fuck was this throughout the entire season there was so many episodes that just didn't mean anything now to say that the monster of the week ones weren't not granted like party on garth is a really funny monster of the week episode time after time that was a good one too like dean goes back in time that was interesting it just never got there there's so many that are just terrible like the slice girls puck plucky fucking penny whistle that goddamn clown episode is awful girl next door shut up dr phil even that had fucking buffy alumni and that episode sucks but it is an actual necessary episode because of what happens at the end it really showed that sarah gamble just kind of didn't know what to do now i wouldn't have wanted to be in her shoes she was following up the best season of the show with season six and it was middling at best and then she had to follow up her middling season with another season and it was even worse than middling it was awful to put it into a very straight up perspective i have a lot more worst of episodes than i do for favorite episodes i actually had to struggle to meet the five episode quota there's no honorable mentions for best episodes of this season. There could be a lot of honorable mentions for worst episodes, but I'm not gonna go down that route. I feel that season seven was doomed from the start. They didn't want to touch on the demons and angels anymore. They wanted to go back to monsters, but the problem was after the sixth season, they just got a monster idea that was so bare bones, so bare bones give Andrew Dabb credit while his stories were messy garbage at least they tried to be 
interesting and variety. Season seven is just disappointing. There's nothing aside from maybe Death's Door that really is a standout episode. Season six at least had a couple, right? It had the French Connection even, which is honestly my favorite meta episode of the entire show. If there's any true positives that can maybe be taken from this season, Yes, the brothers were at their lowest. Yes, they were at their worst. They'd had no Bobby. They had no inner family system. They were on the run. Baby had to be hidden. But the villainous threat that they were encountering didn't warrant, I feel, the depressive level that the brothers had to go through. This did introduce us to Kevin Tran, Charlie, Garth had a great episode here too. So I guess season seven isn't completely useless, but it is definitely one of those seasons where you watch very key episodes and that's it. You don't slog through it. Or if you are, you've got it in the background. You're not paying attention to this because I wouldn't want to. I can definitely say I will never watch season seven again. Not even for a rewatch. I'll just skip it. I get the gist of what happens in the season. I don't care. I do not want to rewatch this. Now, before I give my rating, I did give you guys a poll on my community page of the percentages, and I, like an idiot, forgot to put the right numbers in for one, but a lot of you thought this was going to be a lot worse than it was. Some of you thought it was going to be better than it was, but the people who bet on the 55 to 60 percent, you guys were correct. My final score for Supernatural, when I put all the episodes together, is a 94 out of 161, which works out to 58%. So for those of you who got that number correct, good for you. My personal, personal number for this season, which I think is going to be quite interesting because it makes me kind of wonder, was I harsh on Dab? Was I not harsh enough? I'm gonna give season seven to Supernatural, the entire overall season, I'm gonna give it a two out of seven. I did not enjoy re-watching this season guys i did not even the episodes that were good i didn't enjoy now does that give me some pretty damning feelings for how i'm gonna go into the final three seasons it's it's a little bit uh troubling i will admit i'm so close to finishing this task this goal that i started back in 2017 i've got three seasons left and then i will have reviewed every single episode of supernatural ah <sighs> but i definitely feel like i'm gonna take a break i need to take a break but those are my thoughts about this season apologies if i was harsh but now I want to see what you guys had to say. So let's read off what your guys' overall thoughts were about Season 7. One thing I respect about Sarah Gamble run is she seemed to respect the continuity the most out of Carver and Dab. I don't remember many plot holes from her run. Yeah, that's pretty much true. There isn't a lot she could have done. She only had two seasons, but admittedly she didn't really change much of the lore, which... I guess, yeah, that's one thing you can definitely give her credit for. Leviathans were built up to be a dangerous threat from episode one of the season, only to be easily put down in the end. They had great potential, but it was never really used. Dean and Cass going to Purgatory was the best moment in the episode at the end. I agree, because the power and the magnitude and the evilness that the Leviathans gave off at the very beginning was just so poorly wasted and just watered down into, ooh, we eat people. Most of season 7C seven, seven seems hopeless to me. During Kripke's era, while it was mostly just the brothers, they were picking up more and more supporting characters, while this season was shedding the supporting characters one by one. I think this is due to Gamble building towards a second series finale until it was being renewed. I think you see can see exactly where it goes, maybe, with the final season 2.0, 2, 2 and all this lore now has to build to a few further seasons and not get wrapped up. Yeah, I, I've said this before, Supernatural's renewal schedule was so strange. The fact that it was renewed within the last five episodes of every season, you imagine from a writer's perspective, like, okay, we have to write it as though it's going to end, but we also have to keep in mind that it could keep going. <laughs> this season has a feeling of dread. At the mid-season point, Bobby is dead, the Leviathans seem unkillable, Sam is seconds away from losing his mind, Dean's more alone than ever, Cass is dead, and the boys had to hide in abandoned buildings, barely able to take care of themselves because they were constantly watched. I like the feeling of the brothers being on the run from an overwhelming enemy rather than confronting the enemy, which we will never see a... Uh, like, which we'll never see the bro brothers do again in further seasons. The socio-political aspect of the season aged very well. It is still very relevant to today, and it did so without being too on the nose and without adding color to the political parties. 
Absolutely. The real estate bit? Absolutely. Perning people into mindless drones? Absolutely. That part surprisingly aged well. Doesn't make it more interesting to me, but I'll give you that. I like season seven. I like that it intentionally focused, it was internally focused, and it gave the brothers room to develop the deal with the aftermath of everything they've experienced up to that point. I also like that they represent the Leviathans as consequences of Castiel's failed rebellion, and their plan was insidious and more cancerous. They infiltrated and consumed humanity. It was also great that their place on Earth wasn't the fault of the brothers. Yep, actually, yep. Yeah. Even though they were in no way responsible for the Leviathans, they still had to deal with them. It just helped demonstrate that these brothers are basically caught in the storm that will never, ever let up, no matter what they do. How do you feel about the helplessness in this season presents? Yeah, I, I feel where you're coming from. I guess when I was watching it, yeah, it seemed pretty... Like when Bobby died and then when uh, Jack Sparrow's first mate died and... Yeah, a lot of characters died off in this season. I feel like it tried. That was how it felt hopeless. Like, Bobby dying was the most hopeless thing that this overall season did to me. And then I just, I found it so weird that they had to hide the car. Like, just change the plates. These guys are walking around willy-nilly, but they had to hide the car. I don't know. I thought that was weird. The season as a whole... It definitely wasn't the greatest or the worst. For me, it's just in the middle. I find season seven to be quite enjoyable, but not memorable compared to other seasons like one through five and eight through 15. The only thing that kept me going was Sam's arc, and I enjoyed the Leviathans in the earlier episodes. The season reminds me a lot of seasons 14 and 15. I do think that Mark Pellerino did very well as a hallucination Lucifer. And the only thing that I do differently is have him be more be there more and messing with Sam and maybe leave for a few episodes making Sam think that it's all over but it's not and then amp it up nearing the end of the storyline exactly remember as I was saying there is a difference between concept and execution some of this they did okay some of this they didn't do very well it was very clear when they could and couldn't afford to get Mark on the Leviathans were cool in concept but over after the first half it's just super dragged out and at times almost forgotten I also like Dick Roman as a villain more than the uh, British Man of Letters and the alternative Michael. Overall, I think the season as a whole isn't as bad as four, 14 and 15. Gamble's era was pretty good considering she what she added to the mythos of the series what with expanding the universe. So while I'll give the season a 4 out of 7, it's definitely not a 3, but it is not as great as a 5. Also, Jeremy, I must warn you that the first half of season 8 is going to be so goddamn slow and some things are repetitive. I've heard this. I've heard this from a few of you. So I'm I'm ecstatic. I'm ecstatic for 8. You're just building up my anticipation so much. <laughs> Even though the season is really weak and forgettable to me, it's not as horrible as the Dab era filled with stupid retcon stories. Sarah Gamble wasn't ready to be showrunner. Sadly, you can easily tell with her era of Supernatural. Even though she wrote some great episodes during the Kripke era, and even in season 6, I do give her A for effort at trying something different uh, for the show. It just didn't work. I would have given her a bronze medal while giving Kripke the gold for Andrew Dabb. <laughs> that totally belongs in the dog shit pile. Yeah, again, I like Gamble. Sometimes you just aren't meant to take over a show. Some people just can't be a leader. I can admit that. Whenever I would work on set, I didn't like being the set lead for like a, a key PA. I would rather be the offset key because I can take care of things in the in the background. But I, I don't like telling people what to do. That's just me. I, I'm not that kind of person. So I feel like Gamble was kind of in a similar situation. Just great as a second not as good as a first. Season 7 is one of the most disjointed seasons of Supernatural. I would agree very much with that statement. The Leviathans are easily the show's least interesting villains, besides the British Men of Letters, Ozymandias, Apocalypse World, Michael, and Chuck, whose schemes for world domination somehow involve both curing cancer and fattening up the whole population to eat them. It's just strange, to say the least. But I give Season 7 some positive points. With Meet the New Boss and Hello Cruel World, this season has one of the best opening episodes. Yeah, it had, it had a pretty good episode, a great opening. And with Death Story, it is one of the show's most heartbreaking episodes, where we say goodbye to Bobby Singer. Kind of. But yes, it was a very sad episode. There are also some really good filler episodes, like Time After Time, The Girl with the Dungeons and Dra Dragons Tattoo, and Repo Man. I, I I don't know, I feel like Girl with the Dead Dungeons and Dragons Tattoo is a story episode, but it is a good one. Other than that, Season 7 is not good or decent, it's bad. 
If I had to rate it, I'd probably give it a three or a four out of seven. Carver and Singer just wanted to forget the whole Leviathan story ever happened, and that's why they never mentioned or bring the Leviathans again in the Carver or Dab era. But since we did see some Leviathans in Purgatory in Season 8 and Season 15, I guess we it's just assumed that they were all ended up back there after Dick's death or something. It's lazy and stupid writing, but honestly, I don't bring, blame Carver and Singer for sweeping the storyline under the carpet, considering how bad it was. That is possible. The only time I will give Robert Singer a pass here. I would have done the same thing if I was in his position. Absolutely. Maybe I could have done better if I put a scene in one of the first episodes of Season 8 where Sam and Dean capture and torture a demon because they need information about something, and the demon tells them that, Cra that Crowley said, without a master plan, the le levies are just another monster, hard to stomp, sure, but you love a challenge. Just some bullshit to fuck with Sam. That would have made some sense. I was, uh, yeah, because I'm very interested in and seeing just how much they will push it under the carpet when it comes to that. This just shows that Sarah Gamble is not a good showrunner, even with her show You. A person can see that she clearly doesn't know what the actual fuck she is doing, like Andrew Dabb. Yes, Dabb is worse, but she isn't that bad. She wrote some decent episodes during season 1 through 5 of Supernatural, which, congratulations, they, but they never should have given her the showrunner duty. Her show You isn't bad in its first season, but holy shit, the second and the third and now the fourth season are so dull. I hear she stepped down from showrunner of, of You of season 5, as it will be the final season and is giving it to other writers. Hopefully they'll fix the show to give it a good ending. I've only watched a couple of episodes of You. I read the book well before it ever became a show, and I remember being like, you know what, this is interesting, but I don't know how you could make this in, like, into a long-lasting television show. He's just going to keep on... It's like a reverse Dexter, almost. But Season 7 is one of my favorite because, to me, it arguably... Arguably, like... Season 7 is one of my favorites because it arguably makes the big bad or the big bads prominent throughout the season. Uh, I think it's a bit questionable, Joe. There are literally 14 episodes out of the 23 where they are addressed or make appearances, making their big threat uh, big and hard for the boys. You also have to consider the fact that Dick Roman appears in 6 episodes and Lucifer in season 5 appeared in 5 episodes and Michael only appeared in 3. I get where you're coming from there, but things happened. Story progressed. Uh, the, everything was building up towards the apocalypse with my, with Lucifer. Like All of his appearances worked. Dick does barely anything. There are some episodes where he does stuff, like Girl with a Dungeons and Dragon Tattoo, the final episode, maybe even this conversation with Crowley, but it's amazing how, as you said, how much they are in the episodes, but just how wasted they are. Uh, I will personally die on the hill that Dick Roman's plan was much smarter than Lucifer's plan with Croatoan. The Leviathans have a host of abilities that make them more the most intelligent and interesting monsters in the entire show. Yes, a host of abilities, but execution. Uh, I'm going to let you finish instead of re-interrupting every time. And I understand where people are confused with the Season 7 finale, the Leviathans not being addressed as much in Season 8 and so on. But the main reason is because the rest of the Leviathans relied on Dick Roman like a hive mind and are just the monster... And just another monster that is hungry without a leader. In other words, they just become another monster, and Crowley even says that he has an army of demons killing other leviathans coming out of the plant at the end of Season 7. I absolutely love that Sam and Dean losing resources to help and stop them from uh, that predate or lore on Earth. It literally took a divine spark of intervention, more like lightning to the body, for Kevin Tran to help Sam and Dean defeat the leviathans. Yep. Another reason I love this season is because Sam and Dean are keeping a secret from each other and it came to light. It takes the, an entire season or in some other seasons for them to hash it out. In this season, they only have to deal with five episodes and they're back to it and it's not spread out. Yes, I will give you that. However, how it resolved was awful. That was only early on in the season two rather than the midway through the season for it suddenly to be a plot point. See, season nine suffered for this in a lot of ways and other seasons alike. I also say what you will, but Dean was much more bearable than he is in season six in this season. I'm likely one of the only one to believe that this season really did uh, Bobby well with this season compared to the others he's, he was in. Uh, yes, Dean's better in the latter half, but he is insufferable in the first half. And yes, I see where you were coming from with these points, but 
I don't agree, but I, I, gar I see where you're coming from. One thing that this season did right was introducing the three main characters. Absolutely agree with you on this one. That being Garth, Charlie, and Kevin. Plus, I absolutely love the jokes in this season. <laughs> I made my case in defense why I enjoy this season. They handled Sam's trauma with Lucifer. They are plenty of episodes where it shows Sam struggling from it and people wanted a cameo from Lucifer more than not, which is understandable. But I felt like they utilized the story just fine. Eh, I feel like that element was used a little bit better than most. Lastly, I enjoyed the Monster of the Week episodes. The bread and butter of the show and that Sam and Dean are hunting things and saving people the family business. People may be upset with Dean's daughter being killed so easily, but to me it was simply Sarah Gamble jumping the shark episode. A lot similar to when Adam as a third brother was insignificantly used utilized from season four sure you can argue that he became more important in season five but we didn't really see his character flesh out if season five of supernatural was the last season dean would have likely been the vessel for michael and the winchesters and michael and lucifer would have been trapped in the cage let alone castiel and bobby would have been likely dead for good and the show would have ended on a very sad self-sacrifice bloody note and i would have personally hated that one one of the reasons i did absolutely love the monster of the week episodes from season seven is the fact that they are bloody and dark opposed to the latter latter of the seasons yeah I, I give i'll give you credit there too as much as people hate the dab error he brought back a lot of creepy and dark and bloody eh, that i missed and felt like it was utilized in the carver era i would say he brought back the spontaneity but i don't know about the dark because they lit everything like a soap opera one thing I do appreciate about this season is that I try not to make the focus about angels and demons. To me, season 8 through 11 as where the angels and demons became interesting again, but I'm not the only one who feels like season 12 to 13 made the angels and demons not interesting. I know most likely y'all say seasons 12 to 15, but I respectfully disagree to agree. I agree to disagree. But it makes sense that the Judeo-Christian apocalypse didn't work out that Eve, the Alphas, and the Leviathans tried to create their own apocalypse. It's one thing that overall Chuck Warren about when he himself was not without a physical embodiment influence around the universe and the all and the monsters would take over as he did in set in season 15. I understand the fandom finding season seven boring because it has a clear metaphor of corporate greed, but it, like anyone, the reason we enjoy the entertainment we do is the sake of reliability and re I related to this season more than the majority of the fandom. I'm sorry that it's coming. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from, Joe. You actually do make decent points. I just feel that, much like the season and concept, yes, that's right, but execution, it falters heavily. A lot of the things that you say, they do not end well. They don't carry out well. But I will give you credit, like, they tried things, 100%, they definitely tried. Okay, guys, thank you for those. Now we're going to talk about the top five best and the top five worst, obviously starting with the worst, followed by the best. Say what your worst episode is, what you think your worst episode is, and give me a sentence or two about it, and I might read that off And when I do the top five worst. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. 